everybody. I'm Miss Audrey from the Downtown Lancaster Library and I'm here to show you this week's uh, fairy tale challenge. This week our theme is the Three Billy Goats Gruff and like last week's theme, Rapunzel, there's a lot of different versions of this story. If you're looking for a more traditional version, I would like to recommend this one to you. The Three Billy Goats Scruff by Caldecott medalist Jerry Pinkney. The art is really cool in this book. But me, I really like my fractured fairy tales, the fairy tales that get a little twist at the end. So I am going to read to you today the Three Billy Goats Stuff. Hmm, it's a little bit different. The author's name is Bob Hartman, and it's illustrated by Jacqueline East. And if you get this book from our library, it does have a CD in it. So let's see. The Three Billy Goats Stuff. Troll sat under the climbing frame, waiting. Uh-oh. I don't think it's a good thing when trolls lie in wait. What do you think? A little rabbit wandered by, so troll trumped out, jumped out and roared. I'm big and I'm tough. I don't want to get rough. So reach in your pocket and give me your stuff. Would you give the troll your stuff? The rabbit looks pretty scared. The little rabbit shivered and shook. He emptied his pocket into Troll's greedy hands and then hopped fast to the far end of the playground. The Troll looked at the stuff and smiled. Two bars of chocolate, a couple of coins, and a stick of gum. Not bad, he thought. Then he dumped the stuff into his giant lunchbox and crawled back under the climbing crane. He'd been doing this all year, ever since his parents had moved him to the traditional academy for small furry animals and the odd mythical creature. And because he was by far the biggest student in school, no one had dared tell on him. Sounds like he's a bully. The other pupils tried to stay as far away as possible, but Troll just moved from one piece of playground equipment to another to catch them out. And then there were always the new students. Goat was new, and when Troll saw him trotting toward the climbing frame, he could hardly contain his glee. Look at that scrawny neck, those skinny legs, and that ridiculous briefcase, said Troll with a grin. This one looks like the perfect pushover. Troll leapt out from under the climbing frame and roared, I'm big and I'm tough, I don't want to get rough, so reach in your pocket and give me your stuff. Goat was terrified. From horn to hoof and back again, he quivered and shivered and shook. But his trembling reply was not what Troll had expected to hear. No, said Goat. I may be the new kid and I may be nervous, but you cannot have my stuff. Then he peeped into his briefcase. I only have nine pennies in here, he said. And mother says I should save them so I can buy my big brother a birthday present. Your brother, grunted Troll. Yes, said Goat. He's bigger than me and his briefcase is bigger too. He'll be along any minute. Why not ask him for some of his stuff? And without waiting for a reply, Goat clip-clopped nervously to the other side of the playground. Troll was shocked and surprised and confused. No one had ever said no before, but if Goat's brother had more than just a few pennies, then perhaps it was worth the wait. So he crawled back under the climbing frame. He didn't have to wait long. In no time, Goat's bigger brother skipped on into the playground. He looked just the same, same scrawny neck, same skinny legs, but his briefcase was indeed bigger, and that made Troll happy. So Troll leapt out from under the climbing frame and roared, I'm big and I'm tough, I don't want to get rough, so reach in your pocket and give me your stuff. Goat's bigger brother trembled too, from horn to hoof and back again. But once again, Troll was surprised by his reply. No, said Goat's bigger brother, I may be new and I may be nervous, 
but you cannot have my stuff. Then he, too, peeked into his briefcase. I only have 19 pennies, he said, and a little notebook, but my big brother should be along any minute, and he has loads and loads of money and lots of other stuff. There's another brother, grunted Troll. Oh yes, said Goat's bigger brother, and he has the biggest briefcase of all. All right then, grumbled Troll, I'll wait for him. So Goat's bigger brother skipped away to the other side of the playground, and Troll climbed back under the climbing frame. Again, he didn't have to wait for long. In no time, Goat's biggest brother walked across the playground. He was much taller than the other two, but otherwise looked just the same, same scrawny neck, same skinny legs, and the biggest briefcase of all. Troll leapt out from under the climbing frame and roared, I'm big and I'm tough, I don't want to get rough, so reach in your pocket and give me your stuff. Goat's biggest brother looked down at Troll, but he did not quiver, he did not shiver, he did not even shake. His horns and hooves stayed perfectly still, and when he gave his reply, there was not even a hint of nervousness. No, he said calmly, I don't think so. And why not, roared Troll, because all you got in your stupid briefcase are nine pennies and notebooks and neckties and noodles and I'm supposed to wait until your bigger brother comes along? No, said Goat's bigger bro biggest brother even more calmly, because I'm the new head teacher here and we have some talking to do. Uh-oh, somebody's in trouble. Then he marched Troll to the school office. All at once, a cheer rose from the playground, and later that day, Troll was forced to open his giant lunchbox and return everybody's stuff. Troll's parents were so embarrassed that they decided to move away. They wanted to make it harder for their son to be a bully and found him a new school, Mrs. Ragweed's Academy for Giants, Ogres, and other Troll-sized creatures. Uh-oh, they all look pretty big. And they found themselves a new home under a bridge. But that's another story. Or is it? The end. So in the traditional version of Three Billy Goats Gruff, there's a troll living under a bridge by the river and the different goats are trying to get across that bridge to get to the grass on the other side so that they can have a nice lunch. So this week's fairy tale challenge is based off of how are the goats going to get across the river. So in your grab and go bags you have instructions for this week's activity. You have a troll and little goats that you can decorate and cut out. You've got some little word puzzles and paper puzzles there. You have a strip of paper that you can use for your river if you'd like. You've got pipe cleaners. You've got a couple little cups. Some yarn. got all sorts of stuff in here this time. You've got a collection of craft sticks, including some little weeny ones, and rubber bands, straws, and yes, that's what you have in there. So like last week's challenge, you don't have to just use what's in your bag. You can also use things that you have lying around your house. You can use Legos, you can use tape, you can use whatever you like. My example for this week of what I made, I mostly used what was in the bag and I made a little ferry for the goats to cross the river. And I made it so they could either pull themselves across on their little raft or someone standing on the shore could pull them across their river that way. 
and I got tired of my cups moving around, so I actually used Play-Doh to anchor my cups down onto the tray. So really, you can use whatever you have around the house. Just make sure that you double check with grown-ups if you're dipping into the family art supply um, to make sure that you're not taking something that someone else has uh, a, a use for and have a lot of fun. You can make whatever you like. Um, the instructions here have a couple of other suggestions if you're stuck. And as always, we would love to see what you've made at the end. So please take a picture and share it to, um, and you can email it to us. The email address is there, or you can share it in the comment section below but one way or another we would love to see what everybody makes i hope you have a good time and we will see you all next week